Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training. Today's training is a garage inspection and some repairs to try to correct some of the items found the ordinary. during the inspection. Now, let's talk about the electrical. Now, as we're walking around the garage, I see this uh, duplex receptacle here and um, it is being fed by this Romex wire and following this Romex wire it is getting its power let's see if we can follow it all the way it's coming across right there coming across and it's going into this junction box right there so th what's happening is is that this Romex wire is below seven feet here, and it is um, not not per code. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this circuit out, and we're going to bring it uh, take it out from that junction box. And I got some conduit here, and we're gonna what we're going to do is there's already an outlet right here, uh, and then hopefully this one. Yeah, looks like there's a half inch knockout right there. So what I can do is I can hit that knockout and I can put in this uh, half inch conduit that I got and I can run this conduit along this beam right here and then bring it down and then it's, instead of having the box on this side, we'll just put the box right here so the, the conduit will just come straight down right into it and put it right there. Now, this particular outlet I can see already is not a GFCI uh, rated outlet. That does not mean that that's not protected by a GFCI. Uh, what you do, let me get my... T okay, here's a GFCI outlet tester. Well, let's plug it in, see if we got juice here. Okay, so now we know that this is um, live with electricity and it is wired correctly. We can tell because of the two amber lights and there's a code, a legend right here that make to tell you that when the two amber lights are on, oops, come on come, camera, we know that, that two amber lights means that it's wired correctly, okay? You push this center button down here and if this was GF, see how the light comes on? That's telling you that I'm pushing the button down but these lights are not shutting off. That means that this outlet is not GFCI protected. GFCI is one of these puppies, okay? Here's, a, here's the box. And it tells you right there that it's a G, GFCI protected outlet, which stands for Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter. This is the box. This is the actual outlet right here. And I installed one. I installed this one right here just the other day. And this, what happened was, is I had this one in its, was here, okay? So what I had was, you got electricity coming into this duplex, and I, and the hot lead went in over to this wire right here, feeding one side of the switch, and also feeding this uh, receptacle here. Then this receptacle, which is, was the bottom one here, feeds this right here. So then, when you plug this in, okay, I was and I and I pushed my test button here. I was not GFCI protected. When I hit it now, I'm protected because it trips this GFCI right here. So I am completely protected. And the way that I wired it, if you'll notice, this light went off at the same time. That's what this uh, used to operate. This this switch here used to operate the light that just went out. Let me reset this. Okay, see how I push that red button right there and the thing reset. You can also push the black button here uh, which does the exact same thing as pushing this button here. Alright, so instead of using the button here on the GFCI protector that I have, you can test these with these built-in buttons. So the black one is the test button. You hit it Notice it trips out. Reset button is the red one on this one. And there you go, reset. On this particular one, it also has a nice LED here. Oh, come on. 
It's a little hard to see because of the light. Let me uh, shut the light off. And you can see that LED right there. When you go and trip it, and you hit the trip button here, that's the reset, that's the trip. Notice how the light went out? Now I'll go ahead and reset it. Oops. Let me try that again. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Is that reset? Yeah, I think that, I think that is reset. I shut, that's because I shut the light off. This is messing me up. Okay, so we're reset there, and that's how that whole thing works. And that is why I do it that way. All right. Uh, so, right. so you're supposed to have in your garage, every outlet is supposed to be GFCI protected. So I went through all my outlets located in my garage, and I changed them out, except for that one and this one up here which feeds that this garage door uh, and I already know that the power is coming from circuit 9 I've troubleshooted this one before uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this outlet to a GFCI which is this outlet right here that I purchased this one is going to be installed right there and when I put my conduit in here and bring that down what I'm gonna do is when you look at the the GFC okay so here you can see at the top it says line which is your incoming line voltage goes to here and here on the top lugs black on brass remember that so hit this is your brass lug this is where the black lead goes this is a silver lug this is where your neutral goes then on your load which in my case my load is going to be this secondary outlet right there. That's going to be my load. So on the hot lead of the load, I'm going to connect it onto this bottom brass line where it says load. And uh, on the top, on the on the on the uh, silver screw terminal, that's where the neutral will go. Uh, uh, and that's that. So that's how I'm going to uh, take care of this um, this uh, GFCI. This one is going to be installed right up there, right there where that one's going, right there. So when you're doing your garage inspection, all your outlets should be GFCI protected. Why do you want this? The reason why, the reason why I went through all this trouble and changed out this one here for this one here. This one, this is right at my workbench. This is my workbench right here. Uh, I'm using a whole bunch of tools and everything, and I'm plugging into this power strip right here. Um, GFCIs, what they do is they protect your life. The reason why you want a GFCI is because a, a GFCI is going to save your life. If there's a problem with the electrical circuit that you're plugged into, the GFCI is going to trip before it. Uh, the electrical circuit that has some type of a problem uh, electrocutes you and dies. Here's the example. You are in a bathtub with water and you are using a blow dryer on your hair and you slip and the blow dryer s falls out of your hands and it falls into the water where you are. If you were plugged into a non-GFCI rated outlet, you would die because the blow dryer would uh, electrocute the water which you're in and then you would become electrocuted. Okay, so what would happen if you had the hair dryer plugged into a GFCI, then you drop the hair dryer into the water. What's going to happen is, is this trip mechanism that's built into the GFCI is going to trip beef and take the power out of the circuit. It'll stop the power right here from going further and it will save your life. You will not get electrocuted and die because these things operate within milliseconds. Less than one second this thing will trip. It is extremely sensitive and it's a wonderful safety device and that's why and that is why it is required per code for GFCIs to be located in all wet areas. The bathrooms, the kitchens, the exterior of the home, 
and the garage. These are all considered wet areas. So that's why you want to make sure that you have these and that's how you test them with those GFCI protectors. That, I mean that G GFCI tester I showed you. All right, I cleared the bikes out of the way so I got a nice open space here. Got the ladder out ready to go. I plugged in this here. I can see that the electricity is still on. Now, um, I want to bring my conduit basically down here. I got to pull out a screw here and a, there's a nail up there. I'll pull that out. But basically, I just want to uh, come off of this box here, come down across the go into the center of this, come down into here, and then land somewhere, I don't know, somewhere around here, I guess. Uh, a little bit higher than this um, uh, I'd like to go, just because this thing here is uh, gets in the way of this thing, and I don't want this to be an issue. Uh, not that it, not that it will be an issue, because I store this on this side anyways. But I'll put it up a little bit higher. Now, uh, for, oh, and another thing. I cannot reuse this box, and the reason why is because this particular box does not have a half inch conduit knockout. It's got this hole here for Romex. So I've got this box here. There's my box. That is a half inch knockout. It's actually got knockouts all the way around it, but I'm going to end up installing this box right here uh, approximately yay, like that. And that'll be good to go for my uh, my deal. So I got the conduit. I got half inch EMT conduit right there on the ground, ready to go. I got a uh, conduit bender. I got to get it out of the car. Uh, I've got these here, which is called set screw connectors, half inch. So I can connect this onto the half inch knockout and connect the half inch EMT onto here. I got uh, three of these things, I uh, might have to get more, who knows, we'll see. Uh, and this is for half inch EMT, so I'm good to secure my EMT to the wall with that. I have a GFCI protector here, but that one is going to go up there. Then that outlet is going to come out. Now uh, this will be the cover plate for this GFCI. Let's see what color this is. Well, this one is white. I could just reuse that outlet there. Uh, let me just test it. Uh, tests nice. I can tell when you put this in and out, I can tell by the how much tension um, pulling this out to tells me how how good the, the tongs of the electrical receptacle are, whether they're loose. If they're if this outlet was 40 years old and used every single day, a common outlet, this thing here would be like falling out, falling onto the ground like in a hotel, you know. Um, but this is this outlet is fine. So I can reuse that duplex receptacle and mount it right there in the new J box, uh, single gain J box, which is right there. First thing I want to do is I want to kill power. Okay, now I've already touched this circuit in the past and I've already labeled it. Obviously it's breaking number nine and I'm live right there. I also got one of these on mine, it's a client tool here. You uh, push the uh, the uh, the button on the bottom, put it up against your Romex, and it lights off. You could also take it, put the uh, one, the tip here inside the hot lug, and it tells you that it's live that way. So I got a couple things here. Let's go to the electrical panel. All right, so here is my electrical panel on the side of the house. Open that up. You see, I have every single one of these breakers identified by a number. And there's some writing there on the right side as well. But all we have to do is go to circuit number 9. And it's a 15 amp breaker. And we'll just take it and go from on. Strike it over to off. That takes care of that. And then we'll go inside check. Well, a lot of stuff is on circuit 9. <laughs> so we did lose the power here. Definitely off, you know, put that uh, tip right there, nothing. The lights went off here. Uh, but we also lost uh, other lights. So this, these lights here were fed by nine. These lights here were fed by nine. You can see that I've labeled that one already when I did that outlet, uh, number nine. And that feeds the power going up to these lights up here. And uh, 
and that there. Let's see. I don't know if the garage... Okay, this garage does still work. This one, this garage door does not, but it is a light button here. I can hit that and give me at least some additional light there. I can leave that door open there. Of course, I could open these doors manually. Well, this one I don't need to open manually. I could just open it and just have some extra light. This door, if I wanted to, I could uh, open it manually. Uh, which I may or may not do, let me think. All right, to give myself as much light as possible, what I'm gonna do is turn the breaker nine back on momentarily. Then I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna go ahead and open up this garage door here to give me just as much uh, light in here as possible. I over I already opened up that garage door, so what I'm gonna do is just have them both opened up. This way they'll be good to go. Plenty of light. I'll go ahead and shut that breaker off now. And do that. Okay, we're off on nine. Now I do want to work. Alright, I got reasonable light here. I can work with this. We're off right here. First thing I want to do is I want to go back to here. And let's see here. Uh... Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is start running my conduit. I can leave this for now. I'll come back to that. Let me get my uh, con uh, get that opened up and get that plugged in. All right, so power's off. I got the outlet pulled out from the box. And the first thing, when you look at this box, that you'll notice is that the ground wire goes directly from the in this case Romex and is going directly to the um, receptacle. In, in this box is not plastic, this box is metal. This box is supposed to have a pigtail or be grounded so what we're going to do is we're going to put a pigtail on this box to go from here to this ground uh, and, then, uh, and then pigtail that out and then go out this way. We want to knock this knockout here out. Uh, I like to use uh, needle nose pliers like this one here. So when I do it, I do it like that. I reach over here on the back side of it and I just give it a little twist and uh, go left and right. And in very short order, your, uh, your knockout comes out. So now I want to get that, um, uh, that uh, insert in there. I want to get this in here. The uh, half-inch set screw connector is what they call it. All right. So I want to put one of these in here right now. All right. If you don't want to use a tape measure, what you can do is I've got my knockout. Not my knockout. But yeah, I've got my connector in the knockout there. I can hold this uh, conduit. I've inserted it into the uh, connector. Uh, hold it. I'll just eyeball it to what I perceive to be level, which is right about there. And I'm going to make a mark. If I come right down the center of this beam here, then my mark would be right about here, okay? All right, so I'm just going to make a mark like that. So without using a tape measure, that's where I want the, uh, the, the uh, conduit to start traveling down the wall. So the, uh, let me show you the next step to this. Now mind you, technically, if, if I was to use a tape measure, I would be using the tape measure from this way, coming this way on the conduit. That's important because that tells you what direction the handle's got to be facing, okay? So, so, so just so that uh, it's 100% idiot proof, I'll put a little arrow on here indicating that the measurement came from this way. Alright, and then I'll show you the next step for me to create my 90 degree bend. Okay, so over here, way over here is my box where I put the connector on. That's all nice and tight. That's what I inserted the conduit into. We're going to come down, come across down here. And, um, and so that was the end of the EMT that I pushed into the box. Here is that mark that I told you with the arrow indicating that the measurement came from that way. Here's my, my uh, conduit bender, okay? It is nothing more than a very standard 
EMT conduit bender that if anyone's bent conduit before, this is basically the uh, the the go-to tool when you, especially if you're like me, where you don't bend conduit every single day. Anyways, it's got a little marking on here that tells you to deduct five inches at the arrow. On a conduit bender, there's two things. There's an arrow and a star. The star, which is right here, is meant for the back-to-back -back bends, which we're not doing. And the arrow on this one is here. Now I'll notice on this one that I can see my uh, black Sharpie writing, and I wrote that probably, I don't know, how many years ago, to take up four and three quarters of an inch, telling me that I believe this person I'm not this person, but this uh, manufacturer here is off by just a small amount of five inches. And it really should be four and three quarters of an inch. I'll do four and three quarters of an inch since I took the time to write that down. And we'll see how well I line up in the in this. The worst case scenario is I'll be off a little, a little bit. Okay, so the first thing I got to do is I got to take this line and go back this way four and three quarters of an inch. So let me get a tape measure. Okay, first thing I gotta do, find my mark, which is right there, go back four and three quarters of an inch, and then make another black sharpie mark. In this case, four and three quarters of an inch takes me to right to here. So right there is my, my line where I want to uh, line up. Now, so there we go. Now what I'm gonna do I don't need this tape measure. Put that aside. This is the front of the conduit bender. I want to face this end, so when I put this in, like so, I want to make sure that it is facing the way that the measurement came from. Then I'm going to take this arrow right here and line that up with the arrow that. Um, line up this arrow with the mark that is this mark minus the four and three quarters of an inch. Okay. Everything is set just perfect. Now, I am going to go ahead and bring this back, putting my foot on the heel kick of the conduit bender, putting pressure down with my foot this way, while I'm bringing the handle back and I want to get a nice 90 degree bend out of this tool. Okay, now a few things that you can do when you are starting to uh, to get close to where you are at 90 degrees. I can take this and I can go up against the wall. Let me show you. Okay, so just to see how well I'm doing up against this uh, pillar here, I can see that I'm still not uh, at a 90 degree bend. I need to come in deeper. So I'm going to push down here, keep coming back, and now I'll bring that up here. Okay. Actually, I went too much. Now it's coming up. I was trying to prevent that, but let me kick it back just a little bit so I can get it just the way I want it. Alright. And measure that up here, here and here. And that's pretty good. That's that's pretty straight. Now I gotta do a test fit uh, into my my deal here to see how well I I did. So let's see, see how well how I did. Oh you know I got a nail here. I'm gonna have to pull that out. But, in the meantime, let's just see how well this works out. Uh, Alright, so make sure I'm seated all the way into the right. I've got a uh, level here, a magnetic level, so I can put that on to see how well that is. That's level according to this. And, looks like I'm pretty good here. Uh, what I can do is I can hold this with my hand and see how well I am leveled this way to see how well the 90 is showing up. And it's not bad. Let's see how I'm off 
a little bit, but it's so min so so small that I can make up the difference with my hand by pulling it in. I can I can get the bubble exactly right. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull out this nail and that screw and uh, get ready. All right. One other thing that I want to do is I want to see how low this thing gets. Right about there. Actually, I don't even need to cut this conduit, uh, but I do need to do some offsets. Uh, so let me get that ready, and we'll we'll get going with that. Let me pull these things out. All right, let's prep this box and get it ready. So I want this box uh, to come into the conduit there. So I'm going to hit that knock out there. Take that out. Need these knockouts. These knockouts are trash. Get rid of them. Take your connector and go ahead and put that on. And so with the box like this, you can hold the set screw underneath. Screw this on like so. Now when you're done with these, you want your screws to be sticking out this way so you can uh, use a screwdriver uh, like this one and tighten up your uh, conduit with. So I need to get the, uh, the lock nut set uh, here inside, get that nice and tight. Sometimes what you can do is you can turn this whole thing a little bit like that and then use a tool like this, a pair of channel locks, grip that there on the inside and turn that and that really tight, that'll tighten that up really solid. So this is ready to go onto, it's prepped and ready to accept the conduit. So let's get ready to figure out the uh, mounting height. Now, so what I'm going to do so I'm going to go ahead mount this back into that box. Bring this down here. And let me figure out what level is. Level is right there. What I can do to give myself just a little bit of a help with this is with this plate, I'm going to make a mark here telling me that that's exactly where I need to line up this way to get level. So that way I can take, take my level. Alright, so right here is where this box is supposed to go. I already labeled it off. The box just fell slightly. So I can put this back in place like so. So the box should go exactly right there. I got a couple of screws here which are just one inch with a nice big pan head on it. An exaggerated pan head. And let me get that on my drill and get this box mounted so it's mounted to this uh, pillar. Uh, Right there. That's one. Let me get the next one. And so what I'll do to make sure that it's a a hundred percent level is I'll take my torpedo level, put it on the side of the box, and make sure that I have a nice bubble there before I land that second one. Right like so. And I'm just going to go ahead and sink in this. Screw it. Oops. Uh. All right. Double check that. Got a nice, nice bubble. And make sure that this box is with two screws is enough. If not, I'll put two more screws in there while it's easy access. That's good. 
it's firmly mounted there. This still isn't mounted. I just mounted the box there and there. Now, there's an offset here and there's one on the other side. And I would like to make the, take, I could leave the conduit just the way that it is, but it would be a little bit more professional if I take this conduit here, come flat against the wall, and then come out and then come down. So that is what I would like to do next. All right, first thing I wanna do is I wanna see how much we're coming out from the wall. So if I take this and put this up against the wall and bring it over here, it's coming out 3 eighths of an inch. So uh, it's 3 eighths of an inch is the distance that I want this to um, do what's called a kick out. So I'll show you how I am going to do that. So, okay. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm just going to make a mark straight up and down, which is exactly um, how the how the conduit bender should be placed, so I don't uh, create a problem here. All right, and I know that this short line here is the line coming into the box, and let me show you what the next step is. All right, here's the conduit. I took it out of the box. This is the end that goes in the end way over there. And then this end is the one that goes in the box that we're dealing with here on the pillar, okay? This is the one that uh, I'll, we're going to focus on for right now. So you'll notice that I put a straight mark there just to indicate what straight up and down is. What straight is, what, what that means is. Now, so for, for me to do a 3 8 inch kick out, I'm going to do it at 10 degrees, and let me show you how I'm going to do it. I'll take my tape measure, I'm going to come back 2 and 3 quarters of an inch. 2 and 3 quarters of an inch, I'm going to make a mark right there. Now, from that mark, I'm going to come back 2 and 1 eighth of an inch. 2 and 1 eighth is right there. Make a mark right there. Okay. Now, what we're going to do next is we want this to kick out this way, and then that one's going to kick back that way there, okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to take the conduit bender, and we're going to hold the conduit bender by myself here. I'm trying to make sure that you can see everything. Okay, now, first thing I want to do is I'm going to take my conduit bender, which the head of this is going to be always facing towards the area that I measured from. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I am going to put it like this. And I'm going to line up this line with the arrow. And at the same point in time, I want to make sure that the conduit is exactly straight. So this way, everything uh, lines up properly. So I'm going to just kick that up against here. And hang on just one second. Because I'm working on the... Uh, Hang on one second. I'm working on the back side of this, so I want to make sure I get this just right. So this one goes here. I have a line that I made on the conduit. I'm going to make sure that that line is straight up and down to make sure I'm at the right angle. I'm going to kick that there so I don't get messed up. And I'm going to line up the circle line with the arrow. While I'm holding this, and while that other line is straight up and down, I'm now going to kick with my hands until this comes down to the 10 degree mark. Now, the 10 degree mark, hold on one second here, it's just after the star, it's not on this side, it's on this side here, so I have to make sure that I hit it just right. So here we go. And right about there. Okay, now what I got to do is I got to take 
take the conduit bender, spin it around this way, line up the arrow. Hold on. The arrow's on this side now. Hold on. I gotta take my black sharpie because I can't see the arrow. Let me get this all the way around. Okay. Now, now the first time I did it, the handle was on this side. And now I have to do it so that the handle is actually on the opposite side to give me that kick out. I have to line up the arrow with the black circle and then I have to make sure that I am 100% straight this way. Okay, now this, con this uh, handle needs to be technically on the ground. So what I need to do I need to spin this around this way, put this on the ground like this. Make sure that I'm straight and I have to go down like this and I have to do that until I reach the 10 degree mark. And then hopefully I can get this. Okay, let's just how well that does. You can see how confusing that whole thing is. Uh, but ideally, what you're trying to do is you're trying to see if you can get what's known as a kick out. And that is generally a kick out. So let me put this up here and see how well we do as a test fit. Alright, so we're not bad, but we're not great either because there's a gap up here and it really shouldn't be quite like that. So what I need to do is I need to uh, kick that, uh, that bend here is a, a little bit too much. I need to loosen up on this bend right here so that this comes back up against the wall. So I do want to clean that up. Okay, I got it. I, f I had to keep playing with it. I kept over bending it, under bending it. Finally, I got it. This is pretty much what I was trying to go for. So you can see I do a kick out right there, and then it's flat up against the wall all the way uh, to there. Now, I haven't done the kick out there. I'm going to mark that one and do this one again. Uh, do, not again, but do that one right now uh, and um, see if I can get that up there. Well, I got to tell you. That was a lot more challenging than I anticipated. I had to just, I just kept playing with it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I got both offsets in. It's just sitting in there loose. Okay, what is uh, the next step that I need to do? The next thing that I need to do this piece of conduit is I need to deburr. All the right, this the is a conduit ends. cutter, a tubing cutter they refer to it as. On a tubing cutter such as this one. There's a section here you can pull out like that. And what you can do with that is you can deburr the edges of this. You don't want that to have any sharp edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and put it in here and just go around it a couple of times. And I'm going to do the same with the other side just to make sure that there's no sharp edges here. Nothing like this that can, uh, that can uh, crisp, cut my, uh, my wire once my wire goes on there. I never ended up cutting this conduit. It's actually just a 10 foot stick of conduit. Um, but I, as long as I'm at this stage, that is what I want to do. Here's the wire. I got the wire out of the box. 
Let me tell you, when I tell you this was a rat's nest, this box was a freaking rat's nest, okay? You see how many wires are inside of this thing? They've got three conduits going in up, up top, then there's one on the left, then there's one on the right. And it's just like a single gang duplex box. So I had to work out, and, and, the, and some of the wires were so short. You know, they, it was just very difficult um, to work with. But I'm ready to put the cover on, back on this so I can be done with this portion of the puzzle. Now all I did was just remove this wire that was getting its power fed from here originally. Alright, so I've got the wire pulled out of the entire run. And uh, when I was pulling out the staples out of this wood beam, it got it was a little tough to pull those staples out. I had to use a um, pair of vice grips like this in order to uh, grip onto the staples. And I also was kind of uh, giving it some persuasion with this too. And I was afraid that I may have pinched this um, this um, Romex uh, cabling. So what I wanted to do was I just did a continuity check. So. What I mean by that is, is I took my meter here, my field piece, and I put it on uh, continuity. Then when you are, and then I exposed the, uh, the three ends here so that you could see the black, the white, and the uh, ground lug. So right, so if you touch the two leads together, you can hear your meter going off. Put that in the picture. So like this. Right now I got that red one connected to the white. If you touch this, it goes off. So there it is, touching the ground lead here, nothing. Touching the black lead here, nothing. Then I'll go ahead and take the white one off and I'll put that one on the ground lug and nothing and back to the white, nothing. So the wire does not appear to be compromised. So now what I'm gonna do, as I'm going to go ahead, grab my uh, my fish tape, which I got right here. I got a 20 foot uh, fish tape, and I'm gonna. Well, first I got I got the power on, so I'm going to have to shut the power off, shut the breaker nine off again. I'm going to fish tape in, going from there, uh, bringing it down to there, so I can feed up this way and uh, and get it in there. So that's where I'm at. All right, so here, this is the uh, the Romex wire, ground, hot, and black. I'm creating a pigtail. This is this is screwed into the box, so I need a pigtail wire in order to uh, do this. So I got another piece of uh, green, and now I got to just use a uh, a wire nut to uh, tie the whole thing together. So in this case, I'll just go ahead and use a uh, a red. Now, on these three here, there's a couple different ways that you could go about this. You could take this, twist those up, and then, um, and then put your wire nut on, which is a very secure way of doing it. In my case, I'm just going to go ahead and just leave them in there parallel, and then go ahead and tighten it up. On this particular screwdriver that I have, it's an electrician's uh, screwdriver, so the uh, back of it can accept these wire nuts. So you can stick it in there, it gives you extra leverage. Alright, so fully, fully secured right there right now. That's good to go for all the grounding. Uh, that one there, let's see. I gotta uh, trim that out. Alright.
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the breaker back on now. All right, now that the breaker's back on, let's see if we have a working GFCI. Now, when you first get them, they come dead, so when you, if, you, if we just plug this in, it should not be on. I have to hit the reset button. So, I'm hitting this for the first time. Let me see if everything... Okay. I got two lights. Trips out just fine. So this section here is working good. I got this reset. Now power should be transferred down the load line, down over to here. Got two amber lights, good to go here. Push this. Trips out up here, which is what it's supposed to do. So go ahead and reset this. Good to go. So basically, that's that for the, um, I just have to put the cover plates back on. So all I got to do now is I just got to put the uh, cover plates back on these two outlets, clean up the, the garage, and uh, I'll be done with this project. So basically, um, that's how you do that. So that's uh, uh, started off with a uh, garage inspection uh, video. I only did, when I was doing the garage doors, I only did just the large one as an example, but uh, same thing should be done to uh, the other garage door as well. Um, but pretty much that's it in a uh, general sense. Oh, one other thing, uh, when it comes to the garage, I didn't mention this earlier, but you should have a step up when it comes to this right where the, uh, the entryway comes into, you should have a step up right there. Uh, and that is a, a little bit safer so you can see that there's a transition right there it's a little bit safer to have that than it is to uh, just come in the other, without that because of the uh, the exhaust gases so it's better to have the, the uh, a little bit of a, a step or it's worse if the garage space is at a higher elevation than the living space and you actually have to step down into the living space because the, the gases that collect in the garage are heavier than air, so they'll seek a low spot. So, that, so, uh, so having to go up into the living space is safer than, ha than having to either go at the same level or down. Okay, uh, that's it, Ken Training. Uh, if you like the video, please click on like, and why don't you uh, go ahead and check out my other videos, subscribe to my channel, I'll see you later. All right, so here's the final product after cleaning up the uh, ground and everything. Removing the old outlet that used to be there on this side of the wall right there. And then there's this outlet right here. And when you get, when you purchase a GFCI in a box like this, it comes with uh, stickers like this. So that if you do attach something downstream of the GFCI, which I did, uh, on the load side, you can label it so that in case this thing trips and you don't see the reset buttons here, you know that there's a reset somewhere on this circuit. That's what the purpose of these stickers are for. Um, uh, looking at my job, it looks like I could put another strap right about here after the bend where it matches into the wall right here. I ran out of straps. I only had three. So I just kind of put them I put two up at the top and one there. Uh, but if I wanted to, I could add one here. This is pretty strong. It's not, uh, I, you know, it's my house. I know I'm not gonna do anything. I'm not even sure what the code is, uh, but uh, I could put an extra one there and I could put one right there at that top of that 90 to be uh, even more solid. Um, there's this one over here. Oh, by the way, on my uh, outlet, so I labeled it here. I know that my circuit was circuit number nine, so that if I ever need to come back to this, I can just go right to that breaker. So that's 100% uh, terminated, the boxes. I put an extra screw in this box, by the way, so three in total. This is totally solid. This one over here, this one's already a GFCI, so it's, it's already very tight. Uh, I labeled it breaker number nine, and that's just good to go. So that finishes off this 100%. I can put the bikes back and uh, just put the lawnmower back because I just moved them out of the way while I was doing this job, and that's it.